I want to read you something from A.W. Tozer's book, The Divine Conquest, because today it seems like that we have a culture in the church that thinks that their creativity and the high tech uh, of today's world is what's going to be relevant enough to win people to Christ. And yet we mislead ourselves because the only way anybody's going to really get saved is, is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the church best represents Jesus when she's the church. And uh, But Tozer wrote, God's thoughts belong to the world of spirit, man's to the world of intellect. And while spirit can embrace intellect, the human intelligent can never comprehend spirit. Man's thoughts cannot cross over into God's. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. That's why it's so difficult for uh, academia uh, professors to grasp the Gospels because they're trying to grasp it with their mind and you can't grasp the things of God with your mind. It's spirit revealed. And I think it's just a confirmation of the scripture where Jesus said that he would not cast his pearls before swine. God will not reveal his truths to casual seekers. And we like using that word today in the church, seeker sensitive. And really nobody really seeks Christ. They seek safety. They seek eternity. They seek forgiveness. But they don't know that they're, uh, that all that is, is found in Jesus Christ. So there's really no such thing as seeker sensitive church. Church was created uh, when you get saved. That's Jesus told the apostle Peter, the first one that recognized him as the Christ, that uh, the Holy Spirit revealed this to him. God the Father wasn't revealed by flesh and blood. And he said, now upon this rock I'll build my church. And the church is the body of Jesus Christ. So uh, the people uh, that come to our churches, primary purpose of coming to the church is to worship Jesus Christ and to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And it's not to create an atmosphere for the unsaved to come and leave our churches feeling like they've been to a rock concert. I love good music. I love good rock music. But I don't believe that that is the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to preach Christ and Him crucified and to convert people uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, make them new creations in Christ so that they can go out and duplicate or mirror who Jesus Christ is. And uh, by the way, Jesus was offensive to the world to the religious system. That's why they crucified him. And we think that we're more relevant the less offensive we are. And I'm not one that goes out to try to be offensive. But I'm definitely not going to hide my Christianity. I'm not going to get rid of uh, a cross. I'm not going to uh, get rid of the things that the Scripture brings forth as believers to walk and live by. The Bible says be separate and come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. And yet we're trying to come out from the church and become one of the world thinking that we can become relevant. And we, we lose our relevancy because we're relevant when we're salt and light to the world. We lose our relevance when we lose that savor, when we lose that steam when we lose that word in season, because I know what some folks are, are, are trying to say when they say seeker-friendly. And if you really want to be seeker-friendly, then you need to live for Christ. Uh, tattoos and t-shirts don't make you a serious Christian. A holy life makes you a serious Christian. And when they see that our lives are pure and holy and different, not the same as theirs. They're not looking for somebody to be like them. They know their life's messed up. They're looking for somebody who is different. And we as Christians are different because of Jesus Christ. He's the one that makes the difference in our life. And so I challenge you today, uh, don't think and fool yourself to believe that you have the ability to convert somebody or you have your words are so marvelous that it's going to capture their minds. No, the Holy Spirit will do that. Our job is to be led of God, let the Holy Spirit live through us, and not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. And that's what's going to change America. 
That's what's going to change your friends and your family and your neighbors. And that's what's going to change our world. And uh, that's why we started the Jesus Community. Because we, we know that we are a community within a community. That we are part of the community of the world. We're part of the community of America. We're part of the, the community of Austin. Uh, our church, the Jesus community, we're, we're, we're trying to make a statement, not just to the world, but to ourselves, that we do have an identity. We're not looking for our identity. And we wanted like-minded people that were serious about God, not just wanting to go to church and then see each other next Sunday, but a community that eats together, that plays together, goes places together. It's not just a Sunday thing. But it's a community that we can trust our children uh, to be with each other and not worry what they're going to see or what they're going to hear. And so we believe that we are relevant when we are the Jesus community within the secular community. And what I mean by secular is uh, secularism is when the church has lost its influence and its power in our society. And I think we've done that. I think we're fooling ourselves when we think because we have big buildings, we have a light show, we have 5,000, 10,000 people uh, that come on the weekends. But how many people will really come and pray? How many people, when heaven's roll call happens, how many of our churches people are going to be there? And as a pastor, uh, you know, I struggle with that, even in a small church, that I don't want to lose one person in my church. I want them all to know Christ, to know what they believe and why they believe it, and that they uh, cannot be talked out of their faith. If you can be talked out of your faith, then you really haven't met Christ. And so the Jesus community is a community of believers that... We are pursuing the life of Christ to truly live a holy life. And I, I know that word sounds like legalism, but folks, we, we do have laws, and America is a nation of laws. And when we're new, crea new creatures in Christ, that new creation, who we are, has new, a new life, new lifestyle, new thoughts. Oh, yeah, we still struggle. Uh, with the temptation of this world. But we're not habitual sinners. And we repent when we sin. And we don't concentrate and live our lives thinking, oh, i got to live for God. I want to know we, we're a people of joy. We're happy. We have peace. We're fulfilled with our families. But we know that it, it's all wrapped together around Jesus Christ. And we operate with a Christian world view in every area of our lives. and But our, our number one goal and responsibility is to give ourselves to God, to be a people that if we are looked at under a microscope, that we're a people that uh, we have a holy life. And holiness uh, is something we don't hear about in our pulpits anymore. And we're, we're trying to set the church back 2,000 years at the Jesus community and to be the church of the book of Acts with power, signs and wonders. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe that miracles are still for today. But we also believe, as in the, old, uh, the New Testament, that holiness is what God is after. And God is looking for a holy people so that when the world examines us, they will see our good works and they will glorify our Father God in heaven. And so we live and we move and we have our being for His glory. And so that's, in a nutshell, who we are as the Jesus community. And we meet at uh, 10 o'clock right now at the La Quinta Inn in Cedar Park. It's at the intersection of 1431 and 183A. So we would love to see you come be a part. Please introduce yourself to me.
and we invite you after the service to go out and have lunch with us and we can get to know each other and we want you to become part of the Jesus community. I'm Mike Stevens. I'm the pastor of the Jesus community.